Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at the IHC Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video I'm going to show you how to do spatial interpolation in QGIS. We're going to look at two interpolators. The nearest neighbor interpolation, which is also called the Thiessen polygon or Voronoi tessellation. And the second one is IDW, inverse distance weighting. At the end of the video we'll compare the two interpolators and I'll also show some other interpolators you can use in QGIS. Now we are going to do the interpolations and you find them here under the raster menu. And they're under analysis. And the first one that we're going to do is a simple nearest neighbor interpolation. So I have here the KNMI stations and I keep all the things at default but I have to Choose here the Z value, that's the value you're going to interpolate, so that's very important to fill in something, otherwise it will still run, but with an empty map as a result. You keep the rest as default, you see here that it prints the GDAL command, so GDAL or GUDAL is a very important tool in GIS, uh, and basically QGIS has all kinds of um, dialogues built around GDAL commands, and uh, if you are more fluent with GDAL, you can read this, and you can use this in your own scripts, and uh, for some things it's really useful to use uh, scripting, but that will be a completely different webinar and course. So I'm gonna save here the interpolated result, and go to chapter two, and I call this TNN from nearest neighbor, and then I'm going to run it, and there it is. And you see that it takes the convex hull of your points, and that might not be what you want. So there are other interpolation tools in the toolbox where you can set the extent. I'm not going to demonstrate it, but that's what you could try. So you can use the IDW, uh, which I'm not going to demonstrate from the menu. But um, you can also use these ones. And in these functions, these tools, it's possible to set the extent to the canvas extent or to the extent of another layer or manually by putting the coordinates. If you use it from the menu, it will by default just set the convex hull of your points. Now, this doesn't look uh, really beautiful yet, so I'm gonna style this one. First, I'm gonna drag my points on top. You see that the labels will remain on top, but not your points, so that's always important. And I'm gonna style this using the layers uh, styling panel. And it, is, uh, it looks discrete, but it's continuous data because of the definition of continuous data, and you can see that in my video on the theory of raster data, is that it's uh, discrete data as integer and um, continuous data as decimals. And here, clearly, we have to deal with decimals. So we use single band pseudocolor. And we have to uh, invert the ramp again. So it goes from cool to, uh, to warm. And this is what we in uh, hydrology call uh, Thiessen polygons or Voronoi tessellation. Basically what it does is assign the temperature of the station to the closest pixel. So therefore you get these sharp boundaries. That's what we often do when we interpolate um, met, met data uh, for uh, models. Now I'm going to show you another interpolator. I'm going to uncheck this one, so we start again from the point, and that's the inverse distance weighing. But that is a, an exponential decay function with a, a weight, so a higher weight to when it's near the station, and then the weight of the, the value uh, decreases when we're further from the net station. So go here to analysis, and now I choose inverse distance to a power. By default, it's uh, quadratic exponential, but you can increase or lower that. So that's, if you uh, increase it, then uh, it goes to the third power with the weight. And uh, if you lower it, it, uh, it goes to the first power, which doesn't make much sense. So also here, we choose the Z value as temperatures. And uh, output data type, you don't need to change it because it's floating point, so that's okay. And I'm gonna save it. It's the same GDAL command, but then with some different options to get inverse distance. I'm 
there it is. I'm going to run this. And there it is. There's also a rule of thumb that you never should believe the automatic legends that come out because the software doesn't know what you are looking at and how you want it to be styled. It might even estimate the minimum and maximum value. So never draw conclusions based on the legends that it automatically produces. The good way is to just go to the layer styling panel. If you want to know the distribution of your values, uh, you go here, compute the histogram, then you get the real minimum and maximum. Uh, you can also see it here. These are the minimum and maximum settings. We're going to play a lot with that in other sessions. It's for stretching the colors over a certain range. But here we go to a single band pseudo color. And we can again invert the color ramp. And now we have a more smooth image. So not like the Thyssen polygons, but uh, more, more smooth because of the exponential relation. Um, That's nice, but now we don't see the map in the background. And there are some ways to solve that. So let me go to the styling panel. So the classic way is to use the transparency. So you can play here with the opacity. But that works a bit like a haze, as you can see. A better way to do that, and that's really nice about QGIS, is that it has implemented these blending modes. There are many ways of doing blending. But if you want to simply mix one layer with another, then you use multiply. And now we can see our OpenStreetMap layer through the temperature raster. This, it's mixed and we don't get this haze that we have with the, uh, the transparency. So that's a nice result. Um, we can do the same with the nearest neighbor. So one thing that you can do is uh, to copy the style. That should make uh, the legends uh, exactly the same. So paste style. And I check this off and I put this on. So it's also with the blending, with the same color ranges. And now the question is, which interpolator is the best? Now, when you're with me in class, we will have then some discussion about it interactively. Uh, I will not do that now. But uh, you, you can put your answers in the chat and we can see in the end which you think is better. Is it the the Thyssen polygons, which is simply assigning the closest value, uh, the, the station's temperature to the closest pixel, or is it inverse distance weighing, which says, well, okay, if we are close, it's probably more like the temperature, and then exponentially the weight of the, that decays when we're further uh, from the station. I'm going to give you the answer in a bit. You can still answer in the chat, keep it a bit exciting, because we're first going to interpret the results. Because that's important. With click, click, click in GIS, you can always uh, create a lot of maps. And people create a lot of fake news by inverting color ranges, using wrong colors. Um, so it's always important to look at the interpretation. And what we see here is that it's warmer at the coast, and it's colder, more inland. Why is that? Well, if you're in hydrology and know about water, we know that the heat capacity of water is uh, much uh, higher than, uh, than of land. So in this case, we can even guess the season. In Netherlands has a, a temperate sea climate and um, that means that in summer, it takes a long time for the water to heat up. And uh, when it gets uh, autumn, it takes some time for the water to cool down. So given the gradient, we are here in autumn. And also given the temperatures, well, if you're not from the Netherlands, you might not know this, but this is not very warm like in summer, but it's also not very cold like in, in winter. And it's in fact early autumn. And we've seen in the, if you check the, attribute table you'll find uh, that there was a date uh, field in the in the table and it's in uh, September so that makes sense so that's a way we can explain this gradient from warm to cold from the sea uh, to the land when we are in spring we have the opposite signal where the land warms up uh, faster and the sea is still cool 
Now the cliffhanger, yeah, what was the best one? In order to demonstrate that, I'm going to switch to another QGIS project that I prepared before. And we're going to use the 3D viewer of QGIS. That was uh, developed by uh, Lutra Consulting, the same ones that, uh, that sponsor these uh, sessions. And uh, it's really great to visualize your data in a different way. I had to manipulate the data a bit because temperatures are not elevation. But what I want to show you is how how you can display these temperatures as elevation. So high temperature, high elevation, low temperature, low elevation. And I'm gonna show that. So I'm gonna turn this one, and this is the inverse distance weighing. And what you see is all these strange mountains and valleys in your map. You see this color station, just close to that station, the, the pixels become very similar to the value of that station. And then it averages out, it smooths until it comes at the next station. And here it goes up again. Now, yeah, the main question is, is this more natural than Thyssen? In my personal opinion, it's not. It is uh, inverse distance weighing works very well when you have a very, uh, a, mu a much denser grid of uh, measurement points. But if you don't have any assumption on your data, then the Thyssen polygon with this sparse set of data is uh, good enough. And then your best assumption is also that the temperature is like the closest station of any location in your uh, study area. If you know about the trend like us, you can modify this model and include the spatial trend in it. If you are in areas with elevation, which is not the Netherlands, obviously, then you can add the, the lapse rates to an equation where you incorporate also um, the, uh, um, there you can also incorporate uh, uh, the, the gradient of the elevation. Uh, Kurt asked if I can also show the other one in 3D. Well, I didn't do those conversions, uh, but we have time, I can, I can calculate it. You will see steps. Uh, Things can go wrong as a live demo and I didn't test this part, so but we can give it a try, but I'm gonna close this window then to create a bit of memory because it's quite intensive. And uh, what I have to do is uh, interpolate this one. So if you, if you wanna know the trick, now I'm gonna give away some secrets. That's the lucky uh, 88 people here in the, in, the, in the virtual room. So this is the attribute table. I used a, a much larger number for temperatures in order for uh, the 3D viewer to understand that this is elevation. Otherwise, the, the differences are too small. And then I put also a 99 times exaggeration on it to make it clear. That's not producing fake news for you, but that is just to make the visualization better. So I, I start from this same uh, attribute table to do then the nearest neighbor. It's also good, you see how I do that again. Um, so that was under analysis and then nearest neighbor. And then I have to choose the column, this one, the big one. And I'm gonna save it. And I'm gonna call this one the TNN 1000. But this raster file, and I run it. There it is. So it looks the same, but the values are much higher. And um, I go to view. So I'm first going to uncheck this one because I don't want to see it like that. Um, new 3D map view. You find it under view. There it is. And what you always need to do, also like in arc scene, is uh, to define the elevation. And I want a DEM, and we fool it. We say that's our TNN thousand, and I'm going to exaggerate the scale to 99. That's needed for this uh, visualization. Otherwise, you don't see much. And uh, it renders, and now you see. Don't look too much at the colors, but now you see the steps. The colors are a bit uh, disturbing. It. Uh, let me. Just remove the colors, but you don't see these strange depressions, but you see steps. So still the question, which is more realistic? I still think this one is more realistic uh, when you have no other assumption and you do a quick interpolation. But we can discuss that over the geo beers, of course. 
Some other interpolators that you can use um, can be found in the processing toolbox. So many people ask about cridging. Don't do that when you have so little points, please. Cridging, it sounds fancy and like that's the best interpolator. Uh, no, it only works when you have really a dense number of points. And uh, all these uh, more advanced methods uh, work very well when you have many points. Otherwise, you should just stick to simple interpolators or build your own interpolation model with the DEM and uh, lapse rates and those kind of things. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for updates. For more free materials on GIS, please check IHC Delft OpenCourseWare at gisopencourseware.org.